Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. I'm joined over Zoom by Mr. Danny Tech, who is the Senior Director of Product Strategy and Planning at Philips TV. And today we're going to be talking about the new Philips OLED Plus 936 with HDMI 2.1 and also Bowers & Wilkins Sound Solution. How are you, Danny? I'm uh, fine, uh, seeing the circumstances of uh, still a lot of Corona around, but uh, I'm feeling uh, great. Okay, thank you. Really appreciate you know you taking your time out to speak to us. So with regards to the OLED Plus 936, I understand that it has a new panel. Can you please clarify its benefits? Two new things. It has an additional green emission layer, and they are resulting in uh, more efficiency uh, in the panel, uh, resulting into higher full and uh, peak brightness. Uh, around about 20% uh, more. Um, basically, the uh, uh, in full, we are going to uh, up to near 200 uh, nits and native light output. When you align uh, down on the uh, uh, white point, uh, the uh, uh, D65, then uh, the uh, increase is a little bit less. It's uh, then only uh, to 175 uh, nits. Uh, and peak, uh, same thing. Uh, when it goes to a native light, it goes up to 1200 nit. And when it's uh, about uh, the uh, uh, D65 aligned, then it's more around 950, uh, 1000 nit. Good stuff. Now, at Philips TV, you pride yourself on your video processing. What improvements can owners expect from the OLED Plus 936 versus last year's OLED Plus 935? Uh, well, two, two things. Um, we have now the ambient intelligence uh, uh, coupled uh, to our engine. Uh, that is to reduce peak light for uh, dark rooms, uh, so to reduce eye strain. To give an example, if you're watching in a very dark room, uh, a very bright uh, sky uh, with a burning sun, uh, what we're going to do is... Uh, uh, without reducing the contrast of the whole picture uh, uh, in total, we're going to reduce uh, um, limited parts like the burning sun, which could really uh, uh, yeah, hurt your eyes. Uh, that we can uh, do, uh, can uh, handle, reduce, and have a, a better um, um, performance for your, for your eyes. And the other one is the uh, film detection. So we all know that uh, or everybody is doing filmmaker mode. Filmmaker mode uh, relies on new source, which is uh, having a film, uh, film bit uh, flag there. But uh, there's hardly any sources on that. We, with our P5 uh, fifth generation, we can automatically uh, flag uh, whether it's a, a movie or not. And uh, when it's, uh, it's flagged, uh, detected by our P5 engine, uh, then we uh, switch either to filmmaker mode or to uh, the new home cinema mode we have. Um, um, the, the choice is up to the consumer, but uh, the flag is not required by the source. We can automatically detect that. Now, I understand that the Philips OLED Plus 936 is also equipped with HDMI 2.1, which is a sign that you are targeting the gaming market. What other features have you implemented on this TV to make it more appealing to gamers? Yeah, well, um, we have uh, we have two uh, HDMI 2.1 ports uh, on our on our 936, but on any of our OLED TVs, uh, we of course have the ALM mode, uh, which we already had uh, last year. Uh, the bandwidth is full bandwidth up to 48 uh, giga bits per second. Um, we uh, support dynamic HDR, uh, being HDR10 plus uh, and Dolby Vision. We support variable refresh rate uh, between 48 and 120 hertz, and uh, also eARC. In the uh, variable refresh rate, uh, we support HDMI forum VRR, but also the very specific FreeSync format and also the G-Sync format. On FreeSync, we have FreeSync Premium, 
we do not get from AMD the Pro label, as they're still very much into display specification into light output. And one of their criteria is that uh, display should have uh, around 400 uh, nit. Now, obviously, uh, OLED cannot meet that requirement, but OLED has uh, a lot uh, other benefits like uh, much better blacks and very high peaks, which they do realize. But uh, up till now, uh, there has been many uh, discussions and uh, uh, alignments uh, on this. They do see the advantage of OLED. Still, at this moment, they are not going to give to any OLED at this moment the Pro label. So our OLED range is supporting FreeSync Premium which is the highest level you can get on OLED. And besides that, we also do support HGIG because, yeah, it's also an important element in case of gaming that we do it in the right way, allowing the tone mapping by the game console. So uh, we're also fully supporting that one. And uh, maybe back to different standards uh, on VRR, we are going to a very low latency now. In the case of VRR 4K uh, 120 Hz, we're uh, down to 11 milliseconds latency. Maybe to uh, give a bit of background, there's always the four milliseconds you get from the display uh, running at 120 Hz. That gives you four milliseconds. So platform-wise, we're only adding to that uh, seven milliseconds. It can be confusing. Some other brands uh, do not uh, quote or do not take into account the, the display uh, part, and then the number looks even better. But good to, to know that it is the full latency, which is platform plus, uh, plus display. Do you have any plans to support 4K 120Hz in Dolby Vision for gaming? We are actually... Uh, Oh, maybe one thing before I answer that one. Uh, on top of that, uh, we of course have also our Ambilight Gaming, and together with uh, then even the audio codecs like Dolby Atmos and uh, DTS uh, HD, uh, we actually could say with all the features I already mentioned, uh, and on top of that, our Ambilight Gaming and our good audio spec, we really have, uh, we, we are giving the consumer a whole uh, new gaming experience with a, a high uh, uh, immersive uh, level. So that is something uh, with the Ambilight. Uh, yeah, we can only uh, only you can only get that from from Philips. Okay, so I think you know one concern with people when they hear about you know Ambilight gaming is that whether you know the processing of Ambilight will actually add to the input lag. Can you shed some light on it? Uh, the uh, the you know, the uh, uh, MB, MB light uh, processing will not uh, add uh, to to the uh, gaming lag. That's good to know. And circling back to my earlier question, are there any plans from your part to implement 4K 120 Hz Dolby Vision gaming? Because I think the Xbox is already starting to support it since one of the beta version, and presumably a public firmware will come out later. Yeah, you're right. So uh, you're. Could just that you mention yourself beta version. So yeah, uh, we are planning uh, for that, but uh, up till now the spe specification of uh, 4K 120Hz Dolby Vision is not completely finalized. We are working uh, closely together with Dolby Lab, uh, uh, and uh, we are uh, reviewing their their specs uh, at this moment. It's a bit early to say we will be able to 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 handle it. Um, but definitely, it's our ambition uh, to have this. Um, but uh, but uh, there are a couple of open points still. Also, the gaming uh, console itself uh, many times uh, drops back to to the, the 60 hertz. Uh, so there, there, it's not a done deal uh, yet. There, but the plan is there, and uh, a bit too early to con to confirm. That. Good. Now. We are in 2021, and OLED burn-in remains a worry among gamers, especially those who play games for really long periods. Now, on the OLED Plus 936, you know, what counter burn-in measures have you implemented? 
The 926 has the same uh, counter or burn-in uh, measures, but uh, let me say that what we are doing or what we did last year and we're still doing this year in our Audit 936 is quite unique because what we're doing is we're using an advanced local detection uh, based on a uh, grid detection of 32,400 zones where we can very precisely detect what is static on the screen and what is moving. So in case of watching TV programs with logos, but also doing gaming with uh, scoreboards that are all the time static there, we can very precisely detect those static elements in the picture and then very precisely reduce the contrast in those elements in those uh, parts uh, to avoid burning without affecting the rest uh, of your picture, so without affecting the uh, total experience. This is quite unique uh, uh, versus competition. Uh, so far, I have not seen anything uh, of that uh, standard uh, doing the reduction of the uh, burn-in uh, uh, problem. Over the course of you know the past year, I've reviewed some other televisions with HDMI 2.1 features added by the MediaTek SOC, which I believe you are using as well. Have you encountered any difficulties with integrating the SOC within your you know picture processing, and whether you know you have done anything extra to overcome these difficulties? Um, yeah, I. I I think I know where you're heading to. Um, we uh, indeed uh, saw that other brands using the same uh, chip as we do uh, at uh, like a half resolution. Uh, in the first instance, it was like in case of 4K, uh, uh, the 120 hertz, the uh, resolution was half horizontal and vertical. Um, we are uh, using the same chip, uh, the MediaTek chip, but Maybe something important to mention is that that, that chip also resides or allows for our own plug-in software. And so we have uh, worked out solutions to overcome that because we read about it in, the, in, in articles from journalists. Uh, it's of course not nice uh, that you go to 120 hertz, but then you have to give up resolution. Uh, we are able to overcome that with uh, some additional software that is steering the media chip in the right way. Um, going deeper into how we do that, and I would uh, not like to reveal that because I know that some of our competitors still suffer from that and I don't want to give them through this interview the, uh, the solution. So that's certainly quite reassuring to know and I look forward to receiving and testing the OLED Plus 936. I really appreciate you taking your time out to answer all my fairly technical questions but you know I think my enthusiast viewing audience you know will be interested in this new Philips OLED Plus 936 and I can't wait to get my hands on one to look at it and also listen to it. Thanks a lot Danny for your time today. Thank you.